His hard right hook and gentle heart made Max Schmeling the darling of the German nation. The former world heavyweight champion's 1936 victory over Joe Lewis was followed by millions. He was always a very upright, a very tolerant, and a very principled man. Max Schmeling became a legend in his lifetime. He was the athlete of the century, the last century. He was the German super megastar, long before Boris Becker or Steffi Graf. In many ways, Schmeling's story is a mirror of German history. Action! And critics cringed when they heard that director Uwe Boll was going to tackle it. Boll has been dubbed the world's worst filmmaker. Was this movie set to sully a national icon? But Ball tells the story of Schmeling between 1930 and 1948 with surprising authenticity, showing how the boxer was turned into a figurehead for the Nazi regime. The film emphasizes the discomfort that Schmeling felt in the role. Schmeling took several risks to protect his Jewish friends. He became politically inconvenient. When the war started, Schmeling became a paratrooper. Soon after, the Nazis turned their backs on him. Schmeling wird aus der Wehrmacht entfernt. Ganz still und leise. Kein Wort mehr über ihn. Der Führer will den Namen Schmeling nie wieder hören. Geben Sie mir die Arbeitsgenehmigung. Ich brauche die Arbeitsgenehmigung. In 1945, Germany and Schmeling had to start over again. Just as he had after every knockout, the boxer struggled back onto his feet, focused on his strengths, and once again became a hero. Always at his side was his trainer, Max Machon, portrayed convincingly by Heino Ferch, who's become a fixture in recent German historical feature films. More surprising is the leading man. Retired boxer Henry Maske plays Max Schmeling, or tries to. It's a great story, and with Henry we have a man, well, no one could play Max Schmeling better than he can. Schmeling is said to have thought the same. Apparently, we have him to thank for the casting. The screenplay had a good feel to it, as far as I could judge as a layman. And. And then there was that statement of Max's, if anyone should play me, then Henry. All that forced me to think about it seriously. In any case, by taking on the role of Schmeling, Muska has paid homage to his fellow boxer and idol. But he certainly hasn't done himself any favors. What's going to like his hero, Schmeling, Muska is better with his fists than with his words. The few words he does speak are often wooden and monotonous. Which includes the scene in which he proposes to his wife. Ja, bitte. Verbinden Sie. Es ist alles aus. Es ist alles vorbei. Annie. Willst du meine Frau werden? Was? Du verlässt mich nicht. Annie, willst du meine Frau werden? Ja. Equally unconvincing when he meets his greatest opponent again. Hey, Max. Danke fürs Kommen. Schön, dich wiederzusehen, Joe. Auf einen fairen Kampf. Ich sehe dich im Ring, Max. Or when he declines to be used for political purposes. Henry Muska is a regrettable stumbling block to this otherwise well-made and plausible picture. The external circumstances by Muska passed so good. Muska was so suitable that it would have been a shame if he hadn't been able to act. I think all he has to do in this role is be himself. He's basically playing himself. The one thing that Henry Muska does do well in this film is box. 
the scenes in the ring convey an authentic professional atmosphere. Perhaps it would have been simpler to have taught an actor how to box instead of hoping that this boxer would be able to act.